Praise the Lord. Um, today I'm going to try a little experiment. And the message is going to be called, Put the Blame on the Man. Let's blame the man. Okay? Um, because uh, they can take scriptures, men can take scriptures out of context and uh, just to make uh, women submissive. I know women don't like this. Um, some women don't don't care too much about it uh, and uh, that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, I would like to uh, just show how you can take one scripture out of context and try to make uh, um, try to make it the, or try to blow it up in the eyes of God. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's turn to Romans 5. And, um, 14. Romans 5 and 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Okay? Adam to Moses. Two men. Death reigned. Two men. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. See Adam's transgression. Adam. Adam's transgression. Um, who is the figure of him that was to come, which would be Jesus Christ, another man. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, one man, many were made dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Okay, so there we are. One man whose transgression made many dead, but another man that came in the um, the figure of Adam to the uh, free gift of life, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And not as it was by one that sinned, as is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and all the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. There we go. One man, Adam, death reigned. But by one man, life reigned, Jesus Christ. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. All men, death or judgment, came upon all men to condemnation. Doesn't say women. It just says men. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the
the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Once again, no women, just men. See how you can take this out of context. Right, right here, we could say that it was the man's fault that everything in this world happened and not Eve. It's because it doesn't mention Eve. It doesn't mention women at all. It mentions men. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the abundance of one, um, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Okay? Does this include women? Since it doesn't mention women. Does it include women uh, is in this whole package of redemption or should we say that it's still just for men? I could put the blame on men. Because it says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover the law that the offense, moreover the law entered, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would uh, bless this word, O oh God, and uh, Lord, just take this word to wherever you want it to go, O oh God. In Jesus' name. I pray. Thank you, Father. Right here, we could take this word, because it didn't say women, it said one, by one man, by one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world. Hallelujah. But, does God mean women? Does God mean humanity or does he mean just men that made the transgression? It doesn't even put Eve right here. I know that it does say that Eve was in the transgression in, I think it was Second Timothy. It was either First Timothy or Timothy or 2 Timothy 2 and 12 it says that Eve was in the transgression, but it doesn't say that here in Romans. It says that man's transgression, his disobedience. Hallelujah. Okay, so it's excluding women. Uh, since it doesn't mention women, it says, uh, I mean, does this mean uh, that we have sinned also? Even though Eve was in the transgressions, Romans 5 and 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to remember that there was no law before Adam and Eve, even while they were here on the earth. There was no law, but it wasn't imputed to them. But it still says, "By uh, wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men." For that all have sinned. Okay, so if 
you know, death reigned on all, but it just says men. Does that include women? Does that include women? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe it does. I believe it means humanity. Just because God doesn't mention women, or even Paul, who was the writer of Rome, Romans, doesn't mean that he is excluding women in sin. No. He is including everyone. I'm coming to a point on this, but we right now are going to blame the men. I could take this scripture right now out of context because it doesn't mention women at all. Because in verse 14 it says, After Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him to come? So I could make a new doctrine out of these scriptures saying that it was men who sinned in the beginning because it doesn't mention women at all. They only blamed Eve because she is the weaker vessel. So they just put the blame on women because she is the weaker vessel. It says, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Or does God mean women also? Hallelujah. Uh, so basically, you all are making a new doctrine out of what Paul said. It's, it does, it seems like you're making a new doctrine out of what Paul has brought forth with um, that, that scripture. Uh, that would be uh, 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 14.34. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So here, I'm just going to blame the man. It was the man whose transgression was at fault. It doesn't mention women. Hallelujah. Um, you know, I got really upset about the scripture, you know, and I prayed about it. And I know that there's a lot of women out there that is upset about this scripture. And there are occasions when Paul said, let me get that. In, for, in Corinthians, in the seventh chapter, there are places where Paul says, I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Okay, let me, let me get that one straight. Okay, first of all, this letter is, I mean, this is a letter to the Corinthians. Hallelujah. Chapter 7, uh, 2 Corinthians 7. And 8. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry. 
though it were but for a reason. Hallelujah. So here, here it, it is. It says that it was a letter. And it was a letter to Paul from the Corinthians, from the Corinthian church. Let's see. Hallelujah. Bear with me, because I, I'm still going to come to um, a head on this. Okay, 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Here Paul is saying concerning the things whereof you wrote to me. They inquired of Paul, should a man touch a woman? Paul is going to answer that. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blame the men. Blame the men. And then Paul goes on and says, But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. But I speak of this by permission and not by commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after the manner uh, after this manner and another after that. Which means that Paul was celibate. He was celibate and another man would have been married. Let's blame the men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But if they cannot contain... Let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Hallelujah. And then in verse 10, it says, Unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Okay. I'm going to stop right here. Because I don't want to go over. I um, And... Um, I'm going to come back with more because I don't want it to be too long. And um, I'm going to finish on blaming the men. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you and praise you for this word. I ask, oh God, that you would bless it and let it prosper into the hearts of others. In Jesus' name. Um, you be highly favored of the Lord as I also am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.